it, animals make three kinds of associations, bad people, bad places, mm -hmm. and then maybe it's a piece of equipment that's associated with badness. So here we are here at Chappelle Animal Hospital in Fort Collins, Colorado. I'm Dr. Marty Becker, the founder of Fear Free. To my left, we have Temple Grandin, which uh, we just happen to be lucky enough today to have her using her gifts to help us understand what is happening in a veterinary hospital. Over here is Heather Lewis, who is one of the principals of Animal Arts in Boulder, Colorado, but really the global leader in design. And, and what, what Heather and her group, really, I'm looking at remodeling animal handling procedures. Over here, we're looking at remodeling the way we design practices. So Temple, what are you seeing as you come into the hospital here? Well, the first thing I saw is a, I could see that Great Dane slipping on this floor. That's the first thing I saw in my mind. I'm, can you have an animal, even if the floor is not slippery, to have a memory of a floor that looks like this is kind of shiny? It would well, be slippery? Well, it, 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 they, they get place-specific uh, memories, and they tend to get the place-specific memory in the spot where something really bad happened. Yeah. And it's what they were looking at or what they were seeing. Maybe you might look at that water cooler and get afraid of it. Yes. They'll sometimes get some stupid thing like that, so he's afraid of water coolers. Mm -hmm. Because that's what he was looking at right when he fell on his butt in here. Fear of falling. It's a primal fear in animals. We need to give them non-slip flooring. People underestimate the importance of very simple things like giving the pet a non-slip floor to stand on. Right. The reason why the exam table is made out of stainless steel is easy to clean. Of course. And the easiest thing I think there is to put some kind of mat on it. Just a regular exam room. Beautiful photo, but I've heard that some animals react negatively to photorealistic images. That's what I've heard too, that, that like dogs don't like seeing other dogs and cats don't like seeing other cats that I've are photorealistic. I've seen that more with cats, but I'm curious and they, they as to they treat it as another animal. They would treat yeah. it like another That's animal? That's another animal, yeah. yeah. It's really important that a treat be a true treat. It's not their regular food. Now, on the other hand, you don't want it so novel that they don't know what it is. Put easy cheese or you can put a, a hypoallergenic dog diet. They just get little tiny pieces so it just lasts forever. A very small amount of delicious treat is all that's needed. Right. I remember talking to a guy at one of the zoos where they gave big elephant two miniature mar marshmallows yeah. and it would do something for a treat that small. Yeah. Um, I've worked with elephants before and we've trained them using jelly beans. <laughs> yeah. Just one little jelly bean That's is right. enough. <laughs> so Temple, Temple, you're walking back into treatment right now. This yep. is typical of a veterinary yeah, hospital. It's typical, what, yep. what are you seeing right now? What are you feeling? A lot of activity, a lot of weird looking equipment. And how about our cats? I know that well, is... I'm not, I want to get cats and dogs separated. This cat yeah, right there doesn't sorry. look... Very happy. Yeah, it's not, that's not a happy cat. What if we drew a curtain across here so they at least can't see the distress? Try it. Try it. Uh -huh. Try it. And that's try a simple it. thing to try. And it's the kind of thing you can take down if it doesn't work. If you don't like it, take it down. Yeah. The most important thing is that people need to realize fear is real. And that most of the problems they have with an animal getting aggressive at a vet practice is going to be fear-based. So the fear-free movment is a, an appropriately termed movement yeah. to help pets cope yeah, It's with absolutely veterinary. correct to call it fear-free. Tails between the legs or is quivering. Yeah. It is scared. That is fear. Lip licking, salivating, yawning, <laughs> shivering, shaking dry but they're not wet. That's another sign of stress. There was one dog, I think he had mixed emotions. He was gobbling up the treats, so his head end seemed to be happy, but his back end was quivering with the tail tucked. We got one, the, one end's happy, the other end's not. <laughs> this is a basic principle, I don't care what animal you're working with, doesn't matter whether it's livestock or whether it's pets. They get really super scared, takes 20 minutes to half an hour for it to calm back down. Put it in the stall, put it in the cage, leave it in the exam room, shut the door, 20 to 30 minutes. I talked to somebody just the other day where there was a dog breeder that was actually doing this. And they were training the puppies to tolerate some fairly hard squeezing and manipulation. And she said, when that dog got to the vet, he likes the vet. 
her other dogs terrified of the vet. Mm -hmm. And so I think we've got to start looking at and training animals to tolerate restraint. Cooperative care training. No, it's, yeah, okay, that's a good way of putting it. We train animals to cooperate with being restrained and with procedures. And this has been done for years in lab animals and zoo animals. So why not dogs and cats? And dogs and cats should be trained. But the thing is, you can't do it at the vet clinic. It's gotta be done at home. And, and, at, oh, and it's best to do it with young puppies. One of the problems we got today, and a lot of dogs, is a leading way to shelter to life. They just don't see very much stuff. You have an indoor cat, they don't see much, much stuff. So they see something new anywhere, it doesn't matter if it's a vet clinic or whether it's at the, you know, the shopping mall, uh, it's more novel. Right. A lot of pets today are afraid of more stuff. We got more thunderstorm phobias than we've ever had. When I was a child and all the dogs ran around outside, we never had thunderstorm phobias. But a lot of pets today just don't get exposed to enough stuff. The thing that's going to make the very best fear free yep. is to train you know, people that have dogs, train puppies when they're young to tolerate you know, fairly sort of hard touch, tolerate being held for uh, injections, and, yet, and have that be associated with treats. You know, let's work on getting the dog trained that being on a table is okay. Right. Because if they, a lot of people get their dogs groomed and they have to be on a table. Right, right. That makes perfect sense. There might be some dogs where you're just gonna have to examine them on the floor. Well, the big mistake everybody makes is patting animals like this. Uh -huh. That's a huge mistake. Like patting them on the head like good well, boy they, or good girl. Yeah, that's, that's where they interpret that as hitting. Some of these methods are gonna take longer to learn, but yeah. once you do it, everything is gonna be so much easier. The beginning doesn't end at the veterinary practice. The pet parent is given some props and a list of procedures they need to do with the pet once they have established a positive relationship and trust with the pet. Once we have a great bond, then in a positive and safe way, the pet parent will mimic those things that will happen at the veterinary practice, including flipping the lip and touching the gums, opening the mouth, touching the nose. There's a whole long list of, of types of handling that we can engage in to prepare them for veterinary visits. And then in addition to those, we'll give the new pet owner or ask them to buy props that are identical to the ones that they'll see in the veterinary practice, like a syringe without a needle, or a stethoscope, or nail trimmers, or uh, possibly an Elizabethan collar, one of the cones. Just hear the noise in here, this ambient noise is always, there's the beeping, there's clippers and everything. If there was a soundtrack that could be, uh, that you could desensitize pets so they actually, a shelter pet. Well, yeah, heard, you could heard play this, on the heard, operating room sounds and feed them. It's really important to make sure an animal's initial first experience with anything new, a new person, vehicle, piece of equipment, a new house, doesn't matter what it is, is a good first experience because bad initial experiences can have a really bad effect. If you know the handling history of an animal, uh, then you have a better chance of knowing what specific things it might be afraid of. So that speaks to having actual details in our emotional record, like things that may be hard for a specific pet, like rectal temperatures That's right. or handling of the ears, that we try and be as specific as possible in our emotional record and not just write the word caution. In other words, be more observant. What specific thing in the environment set that dog off? The yeah. dog liked to be examined on the floor. It liked this treat. It liked to be touched here. Well, but like, see, but the floor is more likely to be non-slip. Should, should we put down, if we have a distressful situation, look around the room almost like CSI? Like well, if you can figure out what it is that sets it off. So let's say we had to put an animal back into that same exam room or a very similar looking exam room, and we know that they may have had some traumatic experiences in the past. What can we do to mitigate those environmental triggers that are happening? Well, there may be some dogs where you use some medication. Sure. I want to work on training puppies so we don't have to medicate them. Right. That's what I'd want to do. So really what you're talking about is preventative behavioral medicine. Exactly. Preventive. That's a really good term. I really like the term preventative behavioral medicine.
So what do you think is the single most important change veterinary practices can make to decrease the fear, anxiety, and stress associated with veterinary visits? Well, give the pet a non-slip floor to stand on. Okay. Very, very simple thing that you can do. If you're gonna do one single thing with equipment, where it's, where it's strictly something I do to equipment, yep. it's non-slip flooring. Put up a curtain so that the other dogs are not watching uh, people forcefully manhandle a large dog. You could do that. So it's pretty common practice in the veterinary industry that pets are brought back to the treatment area for treatment, dogs and cats and other animals if they're treated in the same building. What impact do you think that has on our patient population? I think it's really especially bad for the cats. We've got to get the cats and dogs separated. You see, it, having a sense of control of a situation helps reduce stress. I mean, let's say he just has to have a shot. Yeah. All, that's all it's got to have. Yeah. Um, and he's always been done in this room. Uh, let's just do a shot outside and see how it works. There are some animals that have had a traumatizing experience, maybe on the table at a veterinary clinic, where if you just take them outside in a new environment, uh, that greatly reduces the fear. Or like an indoor-outdoor room with a Porsche they can go out on and come back in. There's some of these things that have an indoor-outdoor space, so you could actually, this would have a door, we could go out on a little patio, so the dog could go in and back out, or we could go out and do the procedure out there versus inside here. Yeah, maybe so. Sometimes just changing the place yeah. uh, can make an animal more relaxed because a certain kind of place is associated with something scary or painful. As a designer of a space, you wouldn't want to design all hospitals rigid with the same type of exam. Well, it might be a good idea to make something kind of different. Yeah. So we might want different colors of, because uh, if it's going to maybe notice a pattern, maybe even the, the cabinets are a different yeah. color or the, the wall coverings. I remember going into the ICU at a vet clinic and I thought, I don't know how this pet can get any sleep here. So many bright lights, noise. How could it possibly sleep? And then you go into large dog kennels. And I think one of the biggest design things that needs to be done is reducing noise. Right. And sound absorbent materials are harder to clean, but you can put sound absorbent materials up in the ceiling. Uh, so you don't have all that racket. So quite so bad when dogs are barking. Here's my takeaways from today. What Temple emphasized, the first experience in the veterinary hospital needs to be something positive. And not just a little positive, really positive. They go inside, on the way in here, they're given a treat. They go inside in reception, a treat. In treatment, given a treat. Back where they may be housed in, in uh, going to surgery, treat. So you start with a reservoir of happiness and calm and good things happening rather than the first visit being something negative. So I think that's my number one takeaway. And there were a few other environmental concepts that came today. So a lot of it came down to snacks. And frankly, that's what makes a good meeting in any office too, <laughs> more than the office space, right? Well, you know, you know we, we took Temple back into treatment too, and it was a cacophony of noise and motion and sounds. We talked about recording the ambient sounds in the hospital that the pet is going to go to and then sending them uh, you know, a file that they then play while the pet is eating dinner or having a, a snack or something, so it associates that sound with something positive. And one thing we didn't see today was too, too many flooring problems, but I will say that's one thing that Dr. Grandin emphasized time and time again is that you can't have those pets slipping on the floors, and if you do have that, that is a no-go and you do have to fix that in your facility but we have a facility that we can work with and a team that we can work with and i'm really excited about the changes we can make we're interested to see where this journey takes us but so thankful to Chappelle for literally opening the door for us and uh, hopefully got to share some of this stuff that's going to help you with with your pets and your facility